Hi right, guys, so this is a solubility uh, lecture. It's a little bit of part that uh, I kind of missed from the um, from the assignment on Monday. So what is solubility? What is it? It is the, when you're talking about the solubility, you're talking about the amount of mass it takes of a substance to dissolve in some solvent at a specific temperature and it's a stable solution, meaning that it's stable in the sense that it's perfectly mixed and it's the maximum amount of mass you can uh, put in. So the term saturation, like saturated solution, it means that you have the maximum amount of mass that can be filled in there and that is the maximum before you end up having extra leftover um, solute that doesn't mix properly into the uh, into the solution. So think about in your classroom if you have the phone cases that are used, the maximum mass of substance, so basically the maximum number of phones you can put in a phone caddy, that is the number, of, let's say if you have one that says 30, that means there's 30 phones that can be filled in. If you put 30 phones into that phone caddy, that phone caddy is saturated. So that's the solubility. It's the maximum mass. So like the maximum is 30, so 30 phones in a phone caddy means it's filled up and it's stable and it's uh, no more room for extra and there's no empty spots left. So when I talk about the phone caddy, this is what we're looking at, sort of. So if you have a, solu a solution that's containing less solute than the maximum, that means it's considered dilute and also unsaturated. That means that in our phone caddy, there are some open spots left over. It's unsaturated. It means it's not filled up to capacity. Saturated, like I said, it means that you are re reaching the limit and it's filled. If you're adding more solute to the solution and it's already saturated, what you end up doing is you, end up, you can end up forming crystals of the solute and these things precipitate out. That term precipitate. So let's say in our phone caddy, um, how do you be create a super saturated solution? You would have to add more students to the room and their phones can't fit into the phone caddy. Therefore, it's super saturated because there's more solute that can fit in. So in terms of this, in terms of actual chemistry, let's say you're creating, let's say you're making Kool-Aid, you're making chocolate milk, you're making Gatorade, whatever. When you have your container here, and this is your container, this is your beaker, your cup, whatever, you have some water in here, you add in your solute, which would be your Kool-Aid, your Gatorade powder, whatever, your solvent, the water, has a maximum limit capacity for that specific solute, meaning that if you start adding more than normal or more than more than can, it can hold, you create a super saturated solution. Let's say we're adding some Powerade here, and then you end up, you mix it, you mix it up a little bit, but then you end up with some leftover sugar residue on the bottom that you can kind of see, the part that looks like you can give diabetes really quickly. That is called a precipitate. That is the part that will not fully dissolve in the solution. So dilute versus concentrated, they're relative to each other. So if it's dilute, it means that you have a small amount of solute in comparison to the solvent or the solution. If it's a concentrated solution, that means you have a large amount of solute in comparison. So when you say there's like a lot of things here, it's a concentrated area, that's the type of thing we're talking about. Um, effects of temperature. So you're going to see with your solubility graphs, your assignments with that, with your lecture, etc., that temperature does affect the solubility of your substance. So you're going to see a graph that looks something like this. It's going to have your y-axis, your x-axis is temperature, and on the y-axis you're going to have a bunch of grams, and you're going to see a bunch of curves like that, 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 etc. So you're going to have to be able to understand what that means and interpret it correctly. So all, so for most salts, um, when they're con they contain positive and negative ions when you put in solution. If you add more water, I'm sorry, if you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the ability for that solvent to dissolve the solute. 
So the, apparently there's a secret about why um, Bill Miller's iced tea, hashtag not sponsored, is really good. Um, what they do is when they steep the iced tea, iced tea, the tea, when they brew it in hot water, that's when they, apparently according to somebody, that's when they add the sugar, so the sugar gets dissolved into the solvent, into the hot water. That's why it's easier for you to mix, like, you know, something that is hot because you're increasing the solubility, the ability to dissolve. But if it's colder, there's a lot less space for the molecules to enter into and be dissolved, if you think about it that way. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.